Hey guys, how are you all doing? Dev Chandra, uh, right now we are traveling at 60 kilometers per hour and increasing speed to 90 before we increase the speed to 130 kilometers per hour just after this bridge. There should be an echo. So where is it echo right now? Is it on voice or is it the sound in the background? guys not able to go out and drive because of the regulation due to the current situation in the world or are there any other reasons? Because I actually have some good news from Norway. Uh, we are now starting to open up the country again and we uh, here in the West is actually increasing production, so the suspension of all train drivers running on the Bergen line has been lifted, so we are back 100%. Uh, so from June we are probably going to be running something pretty similar to uh, uh, winter production, so hopefully uh, we're going to see a lot more Norwegian tourists here in this part of the country this winter, and we're starting to run uh, more trains in Flom as well. Thank you so, so much for the super chat, John Skinner. As you can probably see in this video, there are still almost no people outside or traveling. Uh, this video was recorded, I think it is two weeks ago. And a lot of things has happened since this recording, like it started to snow again. And the um, weather is kind of crazy here. Uh, the mountain pass has been closed for cars uh, this weekend due to bad weather. 
form of snow. And so I really pity all the people who actually uh, switch tires to summer tires instead of run still running the winter tires. Uh, because it has been snowing a lot lately. Uh, did you have snow like down in the fjord area? Yeah, big L, big L two six eight. I hope you guys are getting uh, good weather for tomorrow because it looks like it's going to be really bad here. Uh, for people who don't know, uh, tom tomorrow is Norway Day, and that's the day we actually celebrate our Constitution Day. So yeah, hooray for Norway! Thank you for liking the video and videos, John Skinner. And we are now passing Saimskrand. Uh, this is one of those trains that actually does have a stop on request uh, at Saimskrand. Uh, it's not all trains that have that during the day, but this is one of them. Hello there, Tedrick Green. And if you guys, before we enter the tunnel uh, here in a few moments now, if you look slightly to the right, just outside of the tunnel, you can actually see where the old line went before they um, changed it from narrow gauge to normal gauge. As we are coming out of the tunnel, be aware of crossing de <laughs> crossing deers. And if you look slightly to the right, you can also see the mother deer being kind of crazy when she sees her calf running over the track and she starts to run too. Thank you so much for the super chat, Revan. Holy cow, John, thank you so much for the super chat and welcome to the B Black Magic group.
Bonjour um, Prabhu. We don't have any kind of ghost stories that are affecting any trains, but there are actually ghost stories about a haunted housing where we actually used to sleep. Thank you so so much for the soup chat, Finza. Um, uh, yeah, uh, like down in Flom, uh, there's actually one of the rooms they are supposedly saying that there's actually someone, uh, there's actually a ghost there. Uh, and that used to be someone who worked on the railway and yeah, uh, people who sleep in that room has have the sense of being watched during the night and someone even claims that they actually have seen the ghost there. Thank you so much for the super chat travel bridges and I promise as soon as the gondola opens again and start running as in normal service and I actually have the new camera which I am going to Oslo to pick up on Monday. Uh, I will actually make a video from the gondola with that camera. Thank you, thank you so much for the soup chat, Larry. Uh, it also seems it's gonna be a quite an interesting summer or spring slash summer this year because it has actually been more sun and there's <laughs> the levels of snow in the mountains is bigger than it has been the past 60 years. Even though it hasn't been snowing as much here in the lowland, but the amount of, uh, I think it's called downfall, has made it so that the amount of snow in the mountains is pretty, pretty big. And now there, and there are actually news articles in the newspapers about the same kind of flooding we had here in 1995 and that was pretty severe uh, it's actually one of the floods here in norway that caused uh, the biggest or most amount of damage and now they're actually talking about a massive repeat of that due to the amount of snow in the mountains so if we get kind of like a worst case scenario, uh, it will be warm and raining at the same time because then the snow will melt like super fast. So it's probably going to be quite an interesting summer slash spring, uh, especially for us driving uh, trains at levels like this when you see the river right next to us. And this line here was pretty, pretty massively banged up i think it was in 2015 due to the amount of water coming snow melt and water and the flood that actually caused and uh, yeah so there are a lot of points on this line right now that has been totally renewed due to that flood so it's actually going to be really interesting to see what's going to happen this summer Thank you so much for the soup chat, Servant of Melian. Thank you so much for the soup chat, Sakura. Rail driver? Yes, uh, I actually had a couple. I actually have a couple of recordings that I'm going to be doing, and uh, that will be from Voss to All and back. 
So yeah, uh, they are actually coming within the next couple of weeks. If you look down to the right here, uh, you see some red buildings and that used to be the old smokery. And this part usually gets flooded due to the rise of the river during spring. And that is actually one of the reasons uh, Priyud, I think it was, uh, or Yilde, they actually, actually stopped using that smokery due to the flooding. Whoa, thank you so much for the super chat, B Banyan. Thank you. Thank you so much for the super chat, Frank. Thank you so much for the super chat, Jay Johnson. Uh, Folkmaster, uh, a smokery is actually where we smoke meat. Uh, like, not literally smoking meat, but that's actually where we put the meat to give it the smoky taste. Thank you so much for the super chat, Lifeorna. Thank you, thank you so much for the super chat, Rob Jackson. Thank you so much for the super chat, Papa Ron. Oh, wow, guys. Oh, wow, guys. I'm actually speechless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the super chat, Patent Master. Just down the edge from the track here, uh, in the next uh, bend that is actually going to the right, like this nice long right turn, 
Uh, you can actually see that they have put in a lot of new boulders uh, to uh, uh, kind of support the track. Uh, those those new rocks that you actually see down here to your right right now, they were put there after the flood in 2015, where where the where the river actually just ate up everything and the track was almost hanging in loose air. Uh, so they put down a lot of new rocks and gravel and yeah everything they needed to kind of make better support uh, and stop the river from eating out uh, the riverbank. Uh, so this is uh, this is actually what what happens when we have like really huge floods. Uh, then the uh, places like this and where where the river turns, those are typically typically the places where uh, our tracks are going to get really affected and when we get closer to Bolstaide just before the main signal you will also see that you have water on both sides of the track and this is a, it's a typical place where the track usually gets submerged uh, during huge floods and I remember this part back in the winter of 2015 when I was coming down here and I was actually I was actually one of the last trains that was able to pass because the water was actually starting to creep up on the track. So that was actually quite interesting. Thank you, thank you so much for the soup chat, Stephanie. I can see I have made a grave mistake here. It's actually not Evanger, it is Bolstadøyri. Folkmaster 3? Uh, no, sorry. Actually, I have not recorded anything that actually shows the flooding on the track because that was before I started to record on this line. A big L268, uh, yes, uh, they actually, um, uh, before Evangir station, there is a camera that actually sur surveils the river. And so they actually do have some cameras placed along the track uh, where they can observe the levels of the river. And that combined with the feedback from us uh, who are out driving, they actually know they actually get a good picture of what's going on and what to uh, expect. And the same with the weather forecast, they actually surveil the weather, they get a lot of information of what's going on in the mountains and how the weather in the surrounding mountains actually affects the rivers in our region. So there's a lot of information flowing back and forth through uh, diverse institutes that actually gives us a total picture of what's going to happen and we actually get a notice if we need to be more observant on our surroundings while driving uh, to basically give feedback to the traffic controller uh, the current situation there and then. Dog lover, uh, this is not Belgian, this is Norway. Thank you so much for the soup chat, Tony.
Sophia Powell. Uh, the, the ridership here has been quite low, so we have actually been running reduced service, and we still are running reduced service. Uh, but Norway is now slowly starting to open up. Uh, so we are increasing service, so we are starting to run more regional trains between Bergen and Oslo, increasing from just two departures each day to four departures uh, in the weekends. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to start to run the sleeper between Oslo and Bergen just yet, but we are also, from June, actually increasing the amount of departures from Flam to Myrdal and back down. So hopefully Norwegian tourists are going to, or Norwegians are going to be vacating here in Norway. Uh, so yeah, hopefully everything is going to kind of turn out okay, even though the situation is as it is. driver uh, the blinking red signals they actually indicate the uh, indicate a main entry signal and if you have one that has a solid red that is typically a main exit signals uh, exit signal from a station uh, other blinking red signals could also be signals for level crossings As you can see uh, at the signal we just passed here, uh, it had one green and one blinking yellow, indicating that the next main signal, the blinking yellow, indicates that the next main signal, which will be the main exit signal from the station, is set to stop. So that will be showing red. The single green indicates that I have to proceed with reduced speed. Uh, and that is typically when we're going into a diverted track, uh, like we're actually going to do here at Dala. Uh, and that was because the train in the opposite direction was delayed, so the traffic controller decided to do the meet here instead of back at Bolstaire. Thank you so much for becoming a member, Tedrick. Welcome! Thank you so much for the soup chat, Lars Gunnar. Gas lover, um, if you are wondering what airlines or do you mean just airports? Um, we actually have airports in almost every major city uh, here in Norway and a lot of small airports around in the regions. Uh, and the typical three uh, airport, no, airports, I mean the typical three airlines here in Norway is Vidra, SIS and Norwegian.
Rail driver, no, there was no danger of any passengers getting hit by the other train because we have total control of the situation. That's why the traffic controller actually called us beforehand before we arrived at the station. So we could do our passenger exchange before the other train was actually allowed to enter the station. So I had to call back to the traffic controller to give him notice that everything was okay and that we had secured the level crossings and he could let out the train in. Thank you so much for the soup chat, Steve. And if there are any questions about those two doors going into the mountain, it is and the tracks, those are actually those two holes in the mountain are actually where the power supply is located. Uh, that's one of many power supplies along this line. Hey there, Stellark. Samir, uh, the line that crosses the mountain was one, actually one of the largest infrastructure feats done in Norway at that time. And the cost of it was actually the same as a whole national budget. So at that time, so it was a lot of money and it was actually done pretty fast. If you think of how few years they actually used to connect those two lines and uh, the manpower used was insane. It was a lot of people working on that, on that construction. Thank you for becoming a melder, <laughs> member, Celtic Hardcore. Voltmaster 3, yeah. Uh, it is actually supplied by hydropower. Uh, Dale is actually one huge provider of that power. Uh, because they actually have, I think it's three power stations or something in the area. Uh, so they actually supply a fair bit of the power grid here in Norway. Thank you so much for the soup chat, Sheepless.
Jonathan Lewis, uh, the same uh, the same distance in car or from Voss to Bergen takes approximately the same time. Uh, there's basically a 10 to 15 minutes difference where actually the train wins. Uh, it's actually, I maybe think it's somewhat more, but about 10 to 15 minutes difference. Uh, in the future, uh, the line will actually go straight into the mountain you see slightly to the left in front of us. And it will almost be going in a tunnel, a continuous tunnel, all the way from here and into Bergen. With speeds up to 250 kilometers per hour. So that will actually shorten the time between Voss and Bergen a lot and make Voss a much more attractive place as a suburb to Bergen. Rob Jackson, I totally agree. A continuous tunnel from here and almost all the way to Bergen would actually be a travesty. Uh, it would be really good for commuters, uh, so I really, really, really hope they are actually going to continue maintaining the old line uh, so that we can, uh, can actually run scenic trains here. Uh, yeah. Uh, I really think that would be the best for tourism. Thank you, thank you so much for the soup chat, Cold Steel Rails. there Naomi thank you so much for the rose rail driver I will be completely honest and say that I really really like the L18 a lot more than the flirt and that is basically because you have to use more kind of like knowledge and think a lot further when you are running uh, a locomotive with trailing cars uh, compared to running something so modern as the flirt. Uh, the flirt is kind of really easy 
to uh, really easy to operate. Uh, you actually just choose your speed and the train will follow that speed. Uh, whilst while you are running with the L18, things are a lot more manual. Um, you can actually run the flirting manual as well, but during normal circumstances, we are running the train like with automatic or cruise control. And that kind of make the flirt a bit more boring to operate compared to the L18. And also there's kind of more prestige to drive really comfortably uh, with the L18 compared to the flirt. See you later, Stellark. John Skinner, uh, no, I don't drive the Arctic uh, Circle route, and the reason for that is the distance from here to that place is fairly huge. Uh, by car, it's almost nine hours. John Skinner and from June 1st, I think it's actually June 1st, uh, the Arctic Circle route will not be operated by the company I work in anymore, but will be then operated by a company called SJ or SJ, which is uh, <laughs> the state a Swedish state railroad company, uh, which will actually be running railroad in Norway. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's weird, but that's the way they actually have opted to organize the railway in Norway, which we do not really want to say will be effective. But yeah, uh, it's uh, it's just crazy. Welsh, uh, Welsh uh, train channel? Yes, this is Norway. This is the Bergen line in Norway and we are right now arriving at a station called Vaxdal. Reynold Ichi? Uh, no, I do not own an electric car, but I would really love to own one. John Skinner, yeah, it is actually a real shame that they are, the politicians are opting to organize the railway here in Norway in that way, that everything has been split up into franchises and that companies has to uh, have to bid to run on, run on them. And that basically means that you have the lowest bid will actually win. I 
Iron Fort, uh, a priest would actually... Having me being able to use the car during the summer and I would actually have to walk during the winter where I live. And Winkle, the old 24-7 stream, uh, it's uh, still there. If you look at my channel, it's actually still there. Again, uh, that might have been another train driver. Thank you, Gervinder. How are you doing? Hey there, Brian. I'm actually doing great. How are you? I see that you're great okay. Steven Kester, uh, I don't think I've seen Stealth 17's videos on Transport Fever 2 yet, but I will definitely check it out. Uh, if you get the chance to drive those uh, IORs, uh, IOR locos on uh, on Ufotban, go for it. it. I've heard that is such an experience to drive so heavy trains. Welcome, John Skinner. actually means vision or oversight. Uh, I think if you take it out to kind of the French word, vu, uh, so like a deja vu, 
Uh, so yeah, it's basically uh, it's basically view and forward side and future. It means a lot. It's actually an old Norwegian word, uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, I to be honest, I thought the old company name was a lot better, uh, but we were not able to keep that name. Basically, because how the politicians or our current government has opted to organize the ra railway here in Norway. Uh, so uh, we are no longer kind of a one company, one state company that runs all passenger traffic. We are now uh, competing on the same line as any other private company for franchises. And um, so the old name had to go. Postel, yeah, uh, they are actually running freight on this line as well. We are now approaching Trengereid station and we are going on the outside of the station along the old track uh, because we are going to wait for a train in the opposite direction. So if you look down to the right you will see that it is basically just a ledge and the ocean down below. Pretty steep. Welcome to the herd, Reynold Ichi. Thank you for becoming a member. to the herd spirit wolf thank you for becoming a member
uh, John Skinner? Uh, yeah, I kind of did. Um, I grew up close to the railway. I've been growing up close to the railway throughout my childhood and been traveling a lot with train and basically it's just kind of a natural way. Um, always been kind of fascinated by it. There's like a gives a special feel, so yeah. Um, I always wanted to do this. driver I'm actually just a bilinguist person uh, I had some German in school but I can't say that I'm really good at it uh, yeah my my German is actually really bad Benwinkle, uh, weather-wise here in Norway right now, it's pretty crazy. Here where, where I live or our area, it's actually snowing. And during this stream, uh, there has actually been coming like two, three centimeters of snow here. So yeah, it's, uh, it's weird. I have not experienced snow this late in May in many, many, many years. You're welcome, John Skinner. And coming out of this tunnel now, you can actually see that the old track uh, it's not there, but you can actually see it was kind of turning slightly to the right and going straight forward. Thank you so much for the soup chat, Roger Waters. Coming out of this tunnel, you can actually see the old track going to the right. Oh, sorry, the next tunnel. Here you can see the old track turning to the right, and it was actually going on the outside to the old Arna station, and then all around Ulr Ulriken Mountain into Bergen. Uh, 
and that took heaps a lot more time in the old days compared to now where we have reduced the time between Bergen and Arna to approximately 8 minutes. Thank you for loving it, Rail Driver. Sweet dreams. Thank you so much for the super chat, Trevor, and hello! Hey there, Blifton1. Uh, I'm doing great. How about you? Are you staying safe? Are you keeping healthy? Big L268, yep, uh, we actually reduced the emissions with about 8% and that leaves us with, yeah, still 92% to go and it's basically just a small drop in the ocean. Thank you so much for the soup chat, Tedrick. Jackson, yeah, you kind of missed the deer, uh, and that actually passed the track like uh, one hour and five minutes ago. Samir, uh, Actually, there, there were a lot of troop transfers on this line before and a lot of railroads or railways in Norway was actually built during the war. Um, the Flum line was actually improved and completed uh, because of the war, so it's kind of weird to say this, but there were a lot of I wouldn't call it benefits, but it was a lot of building of infrastructure by the Germans with war prisoners at, during the war. So a lot of work was actually done to be sure that we actually had railroad in this country. And this is really kind of horrible to say, but if we had been occupied for approximately two, three more years, we would have a railroad going all the way from uh, Oslo and all the way up to Kirkenes. Thank you so much for the soup chat, Mike.
David Twyford. Uh, yeah, uh, all tunnels will be improved uh, and upgraded to new standards when it comes to uh, lighting and emergency systems. So uh, yeah, uh, all tunnels will in the future have uh, better lighting. And uh, the new tunnel between Arna and Bergen is actually going to open up, I think it's on in mid-December this year. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of work going on here from November and until December. Uh, it's going to be, I think it's actually this year they going to open it and it will be great. And then they are going to close the old one when we're going in right now for upgrades. Thank you, thank you so much for the soup chat skin, John Skinner. And you can actually just see to the left there the new track that is going to come out from the new tunnel. Uh, and you can start to imagine all the work they have to, have to do to align this up with everything else. So yeah, there are not going to be much trains running between Bergen and Arna in the coming winter. If you ever wondered, I wondered uh, to the left here, you can actually see the freight terminal in Bergen, and that has uh, also been a huge discussion because they will want to build a new and more effective terminal, uh, but they're still debating on where to place it. Thank you, thank you so much for the super chat, Vladimir. Spasiba. As you also can see, the construction of the new workshop is uh, going forward and not sure when it's going to be finished, but they are actually, you, we can actually see huge differences from day to day now. So it's quite exciting. So the next video will, in the near future will actually show a huge difference when you see kind of the skeleton of the building coming up. And now we are approaching and arriving Bergen. And that will be our final stop and the end of this stream for this weekend. Uh, hopefully next weekend I will be able to show you a spring video from Voss to all and back again. So thank you everyone for joining in tonight and I see you on the other stream. The party continues there. Thank you.